Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Montgomery College's third annual Raptor Tank Business Pitch Competition. My name is Austin Wickham, and I'm a Raptor Tank Project co-leader. My name is Tahina Moise, and I am also a Raptor Tank Project co-leader, and we are excited to be your hosts today. Please remember to use the hashtag, hashtag Raptor Tank and tweet about all the amazing things you guys see today. It's going to be such a fun night. I'm excited for you guys to be here. To start off our show, we're going to begin with some opening remarks from our Vice President and Provost of the Montgomery College's Rockville campus, Dr. Kimberly Kelly. Dr. Kelly. Good evening. I'm Kim Kelly, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this year's annual Raptor Tank Competition. This also happens to be the home of the Macklin Business Institute, so we're thrilled to be able to host this event. I'm very excited to see all of the wonderful ideas that are going to come before us this evening. This is actually more than a one-time annual competition. The Raptor Tank Competition is a year in the making. Students work hard, develop their ideas, receive mentoring, attend workshops, and have seed money given to them, how great is that, to develop their ideas to the point where they can compete for additional funds in tonight's competition. At the heart of this event, in my view, is students helping students to develop future entrepreneurs. Did you know the MBI Cafe makes a contribution and is student run here on this campus? It provides that initial seed money that makes development of these business ventures possible. It is wonderful to see peer support resulting in the innovative ideas we're gonna see tonight. Montgomery College students are starting businesses, working hard to create jobs to support our local economy. Our annual Raptor Tank Business Competition is now in its third year and it has created a resource for our students to grow or start a business, and it's a place where innovation happens every single day. Raptor Tank is led by MBI Director Steve Lang, who is in our audience and at the, down here on the floor. <laughs> And Director Lang is ably assisted by the faculty, the staff, and the students of the Macklin Business Institute. As you know, MBI is an outstanding honors business program here at Montgomery College. A select group of students have the opportunity to participate in many business-related activities that help them develop their ideas and bring them to fruition. They also do community projects, and regional and national business competitions. So it's an exciting opportunity. Everyone involved with MBI, including a dedicated group of advisors, do a really wonderful job. Let's give Steve, which you already did, but let's do it again, and his team of students, faculty, and staff a supportive round of applause. Thank you for joining us and the best of luck to our Raptor Tank competitors, and my hearty thanks to our judges for this evening's event. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kelly, for your kind opening remarks and all that you do for Montgomery College and for Raptor Tank year after year. And we also want to give our deepest regards to our judges for being here, yes. giving you of your time, your expertise, and volunteering to uh, be here with us today. Uh, we know that you'll enjoy hearing from all of our contestants and the presentations that they have prepared for you today. We would like for our judges to give a brief introduction for our contestants to meet you, starting with Mr. Katz, please. Well, good evening. My name is Sidney Katz. I'm on the Montgomery County Council. I represent District 3. Um, I'm the former mayor of Gaithersburg. I um, um, was, was the owner of a store that my grandparents started in 1918. Uh, and I closed that store about three years ago uh, to, uh, to actually run for the Montgomery County Council, and, and uh, I'm very happy to be serving. And I also, as just an aside note, I, uh, am a, I actually attended Montgomery College before many of your grandparents were born. Thank you very much. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Bill Keating. Uh, this is my third year at Raptor Tank, and I'm so excited to be back here. I'm 
can't believe how this program has evolved. That presentation was phenomenal. I uh, love to see the audience here. I'm so glad to be back. Um, I'm an entrepreneur, uh, as it uh, may mention up there, I own a couple of companies locally that are in the waste business, one of which is a portable toilet company called Santa John, another company called Urban Service, and something called Rapid Roll-Off, which is a recycling company. Um, but I, I, this is my, one of my favorite times of the year, uh, is this event. I'm excited about what we see up here on, in terms of what's coming for the presentations, and I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Iris Sherman. I'm actually a serial entrepreneur, and I grew up in an entrepreneurship home, so I know the life very well. Um, and I've done some kind of amazing things. I was on the founding team that invented Allegra, so if anybody has seasonal allergies, I've, I think we've helped with that drug. Um, I currently have a, a startup that is called Kitchology. It's an award-winning startup in, in our area. And I also help other startups by being on the boards and helping them to be better. And I'm an adjunct professor right here in Montgomery College. And I did notice that one of my students is actually competing. Woohoo! So I am really excited to be here. And I think the presentation was amazing. And this is phenomenal. Thank you. OK. I'm Laura Silden. Uh, I'm the director of the HMS Host Foundation. HMS Host is uh, in the food and beverage business across airports and travel plazas. So anyone driven up the 95 corridor and gone to the Delaware house, had to run in, use the bathroom, get some Starbucks, okay, those are really HMS Host employees. We have 33,000 employees across the country. Uh, we are locally based here um, near Montgomery Mall, but about a year ago, the leadership of the company decided they uh, wanted to really be impactful and help all the communities where we uh, have associates living, working, and playing. One of those communities is here, but we are across the country. Um, before I did this, uh, I was, was, I think I still am, an entrepreneur. I started multiple nonprofits in the county and helped other people uh, start up as well. So I'm excited, can't wait to hear uh, about all the different ideas today. Thank you for having me. Uh, good evening, my name is Scott Nordheimer and um, I'm a senior advisor but a founder of Urban Atlantic that is a urban redeveloper based here in Bethesda but across the country. Uh, we are most recently doing the redevelopment of the Walter Reed Medical Campus uh, in Washington, D.C. But what I want to say is when my wife and I started the company, it started on our $5,000 master charge credit card. And what I'm pleased to be part of this is, one, it's huge risk, both in starting businesses, thinking about businesses, but also having the tenacity to be through the challenges of business. And I'm pleased to be a judge here because I've lived every one of those pieces and I'm so pleased to see others tonight that are, want to live the same dream. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name's David Pop, and I was in the commercial real estate business for, oh, 30-something years. Uh, I recently retired from a firm called Transwestern. Uh, I was a senior managing director uh, there for our mid-Atlantic region, which is pretty much DC, uh, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina. Uh, since then, among the things I'm doing is teaching an intro to business course right here at Montgomery College. Um, thank you. See one or two of my students here, so extra credit for all. Extra credit for all, that's good. And I would like to thank uh, Steve and Linda and really everyone in the business department, um, Georgia, Kathy, Joanne, everyone, for welcoming me here and for asking me to participate again this year in this competition. So thanks very much. Thank you so much, judges. I think it's time for us to learn a little bit more about Raptor Saint. Yes. So many of our Montgomery College students dream of becoming successful entrepreneurs, but many of them lack the financial resources to start or grow their own business. So many of our faculty saw this issue and decided to create the project Raptor Tank. Good. So we currently see that we have almost a triangle, but it's broken. 
Okay, so this represents our business staff and faculty wanting to encourage our student entrepreneurs and our students unable to attain, attain that help. To solve this problem, Raptor Tank was then born. Raptor Tank ultimately builds a connection between students, business leaders, and business staff and faculty. Yes. The Macklin Business Institute and the Montgomery College Rockville Business Program partnered with MC Enactus, an international organization col collaborating with businesses and students to help better the livelihoods of individuals in our local and global communities. Throughout the theater arts arena, you guys will see poster boards over on your right, and we encourage you guys to, during the, the, the judges' deliberation, to take a look at them and see how you can get involved and see what we're doing on campus. Now as we fast forward, we'll see a completed triangle because of Raptor Tank. We, we understand that because of this uh, threefold uh, between the judges, the students, and our business staff and faculty, it helps drive our, and encourage our entrepreneurs to pursue their dreams and their ideas. And today we'll showcase all the hard work that our contestants and our students have put forth uh, to share their presentations with you today. Initially, the Raptor Tank program began with a series of orientations in October to gauge the audience and to see who would like to get involved. And a lot of people showed interest, and 23 students submitted executive summaries. Those executive summaries were then reviewed by business faculty in Austin and I. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And from all of those executive summaries, six of those teams will be presenting their business pitches to you today. So it seems like a long process. We had a lot of fun along the way. The finalists actually in the spring got to take place in uh, workshops that included hands-on learning and mentoring, mentorship uh, regarding different topics such as business concept, uh, target marketing, financial analysis, presentation tips and tricks. So they are well prepared and excited to share what they have uh, prepared for you today. I'm excited to see you too. Yeah. We even had a former judge who is an associate director of the entrepreneurial initiative at the Georgetown University come to give some insights on how these students could better develop their ideas. Near the end of this process, our participants had the chance to practice their presentations in front of a faculty and in front of a panel of faculty in preparation for today. And they're so excited to finish and culminate this year's long process. Now we also have some exciting news for you, the audience. We understand that our judges will select our winners today, but we're also gonna put the power in your hands because you will get to choose one of our contestants to go home with an additional $500 through the Audience Choice Award. Tina, how's that work? So here's how it will work. To vote for your favorite team, you guys can text the number that you see on the screen. It's 650-600-9016 to vote for your favorite team to win the Audience Choice Award. And the business code number will be presented in the pamphlets and also after, we, after every team presents. So you can text your votes anytime throughout the competition, but please be sure to do that before 6 o'clock p.m. because the polls will be closing. Um, what about 601? No, mm -mm, not oh, 601. Not 601, <laughs> before guys. Six. Okay, so you heard what uh, Ms. Tahina said. Please follow those instructions. We also have some more good news for you guys. Food. Yes. We have free food, complimentary of the MBI Cafe in Macklin, uh, from the Macklin Business Institute uh, MBI Cafe loca located in the Campus Center. The MBI Cafe, as Dr. Kelly mentioned, is a student-run organization that also provides uh, funding for Raptor Tank and helps with pay for student scholarships while giving students the business, uh, business experience uh, in the real field. And so we truly appreciate that. So please take the chance to stop by and get some more refreshments before and after each presentation. And be sure to support the MC students here on campus by checking out the MBI Cafe. Yes, the brownies are really good, so I recommend you guys stop by. <laughs> so finally, what you've all been waiting for, it's time to meet the contestants. Our six teams consisting of 10 entrepreneurs that have been working extremely hard throughout, throughout the long process to present their business pitches to you today. Our competitors come from a variety of backgrounds and majors, but they all share the passion for entrepreneurship. So here's a quick video from MCTV um, introducing you guys to the contestants. Hi, my name is Marco Soloso. And my name is Konstantin Sarznev. And, and we, we are, are Food, Food for, for Better, Better Use. Use. So our idea is simple. We're uh, reducing the food waste and we're reducing the hunger in our communities by picking up the food from uh, local businesses and that is going to be wasted and repurpose it to feed the local shelters. 
My name is Nabil Sias, and the name of my business is Evo, the social outing app. We are going to bring users together based off of things they like to do. We're going to present users with venues or date ideas within the community. Hi, my name is Stanley Roth. I'm Elias Zakaris. And I'm Amir Nurai. Our company is a game board called something like Strategies for Life, the game board. Our game board is designed to help psychologists who want to give relief to everyone who has a mental disability, such as people with anxiety or depression or general stress. Our game board helps to guide psychologists by engaging the patient in cognitive behavior therapy. My name is Chris Swift and my company is Swift Fitness. Swift Fitness is currently a personal training company looking to establish a partnership with a local apartment complex to provide its residents with affordable and convenient personal and group training. Hi, my name is Delik Mutabazi. Hi, my name is Philip Seri. My name is Alan Sher, and the name of our company is called Usher. We're a mobile app company that helps students and faculty get their cars parked by hiring their own college community to get their cars parked for them. In essence, it's sort of like contracting students to park cars for people and getting paid a fee, kind of similar to an Uber model. My name is Christina, and my business is Christina's Creations and I handcraft personalized baby bedding collections. I'm from Loudoun County, Virginia, and I moved to Montgomery County about two years ago, and all of my three children inspired me to start my business, and it's a business that I would love for them to continue in the future. I was born in Bethesda, and my parents were both immigrants to this country. I'm from Kazakhstan, and I moved to the United States uh, two years ago. I was born in D.C. and raised in Maryland. My mom is from Sudan, and my dad is Ethiopian. I was born and raised in Germantown, Maryland, and I've been playing sports since I was little, such as football and wrestling. When I got out of high school, I knew I wanted to pursue a career as a personal trainer. I'm from Kigali, Rwanda. I'm from Gaithersburg, Maryland. I'm from Munich, Germany. So what inspired me to start this business is my family. Both my grandfather and father were business owners, and I, I practically grew up with a business model family. I'm a self-made, full-fledged entrepreneur, so once I saw the need to uh, solve the problem, I hopped all over. From a young age as well, uh, my parents started businesses, and when we came here, they kept on trying to do the same thing, starting small businesses, and I wanted to do the same thing, just to follow in their footsteps. I was born from Clarksburg, Maryland. I was born in Ohio, and what led me to Rockville, Maryland is trying to figure out what's the best educational opportunities for me. I was born in Tehran, Iran. I moved here when I was eight, but during the summer of 2015, a lot of events occurred that led me to look for more opportunities in my life. You guys say? Thank you. Winning Raptor Tank will give me the motivation I need to not only grow Swift Fitness, but excel in any other entrepreneur ventures that I pursue. If we win, the most significant thing it's going to show us is that people have faith in our product and our game board. They believe that it's going to work, and the first step for our game board to work is for people to believe in us, because we're trying to empower. Also, it's going to show that we have people have faith in our vision and our product. If I win Raptor Tank, I will use the prize money for marketing if I find a technical co-founder who's willing to help program the app for percentage equity. But if I'm not able to find a technical co-founder, I will use the prize money in order to pay someone to start programming the app. If we win, we're going to spend seed money on marketing, like web maintenance of website and operations like del delivery and packaging. Also, because we're a non-for-profit, our cost of operations are very low. And with the help of our MC students and our community, we can really help our uh, Rockville out because this is a service that they don't, don't have. If I won Raptor Tank, I would actually implement all the funds into jumpstarting my business through a better functioning office space uh, because right now I'm using my mother-in-law's formal dining room and I'm working out of boxes um, and very small space. And I would actually like to hire on a couple more employees to help me out to benefit the needs of the customers.
Wow, such a fantastic video. Thank you, MCTV. Yes, thank you very much. Now, we have given the audience and our judges the chance to briefly see our contestants. Now, for the time that you guys have been waiting for, we're going to hop off stage. So yeah. please help me in welcoming our first contestants of the night, Delic, Philip, and Alwyn, as they represent their business, Usher. Sure. How y'all doing? Hello. Right, that's good to hear. It's good to hear. All right, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, this is Usher. Usher is a startup mobile app technology company that helps students and faculty find parking spaces on their college campuses by connecting them to individuals who are able to park their cars for them. The creation of the app is currently pending, but what we have for you today is a sample of our design. We'll first take you to the user interface, which gives you a display of all the available students or ushers in your area who are able to park your car for you. Once you find someone you like, you send them a service request. As soon as you find that individual, you have to decide whether or not you want your keys returned directly to you or placed in a special key box on campus. During, while performing the service, the usher has to one, tag the location of the vehicle, two, provide a photo of where the vehicle is, and three, provide a short description of where your ve the vehicle's gonna be. These are three crucial pieces of information that you're gonna need in order to find your vehicle. Now let's go along to the run-through process. As you can see on the user interface, the user is typing in a specific location in order to get a display of all the available ushers. This app is best utilized on college campuses. Take Montgomery College, for instance. As you get a display, you're able to link up with that usher. And then they have to decide whether or not they want to accept, uh, they have to decide whether or not they want to complete the service for you, and you'll get an approximated distance. While you're on your way to class, or probably while you're already in class, the usher will be performing all three of the tasks as mentioned earlier. There will be three features associated with this app. One, the call feature, two, the chat box, and three, the tracking technology, which helps you keep close to the usher at all times. There will be key boxes placed in secure locations all across campus, and in order for a user to get their key back, they have to provide the supervisor at one of the offices with a four-digit code, as provided to them by the usher. And then lastly, you'll get brief history information on your usher in case of emergencies. All right, guys, now I'm gonna talk about the business aspects of usher. So our goal is to get students in, into their seats on time, as well as lower the DFW rate and give international students income opportunities. As for projections, our cost of service is $4 and our market up is $1. We expect, expect a small user base in 2018 that will gradually increase to 8,000 users a month. And in 2019 and onwards, we will be profitable. Since our service is outsourced, our costs are low and our growth is, of use is based on how cheap we have services. As for competition, we don't have direct competition because college need is our niche market. Other companies target a different market segment and offer additional services such as car wash or car reviewing. As for license and permits, we should be able to cover it each time we expand to a new campus. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so for market ass uh, assessment, we actually uh, found out that there's over 14,000 uh, uh, students at Montgomery College Rockville campus who drive along. Now this number is actually expected to increase to about 14% by the year 2025. In fact, also, um, there's gonna be an increase uh, of 3.8 million 
uh, international students in the United States, and this is going to serve a purpose of increasing the ASHA pool of students at Montgomery College or college campuses. So we have a seven-step marketing plan. However, we're mainly looking to focus on word of mouth, uh, college partnerships, and actually college launches. The college launches will enable us to establish relationships between students and the ushers and our company, pretty much. So I'm sure you're wondering about insurance. It's true, we're not, uh, we don't have the necessary funds right now. However, with the help of uh, Raptor Tank incubators and uh, investment groups, we're looking to be auto insured by the year 2018. In fact, actually, we're talking to United uh, Insurance right now to help us with that. Uh, we have a custom-made uh, hardware uh, device, but it's due to cost. We're going to start with uh, non-custom-made $200 key boxes, and whenever we get necessary funds, we can proceed with uh, our custom-made devices. Thanks so much, guys, for listening to our presentation. As you can see, we've been talking to a lot of individuals, such as the associate vice president of the college, who's currently looking into an innovation grant for us, the uh, manager of transportation, Mark Pace, and even the president, Dr. Dave Rion Pollard, who expressed interest in us. So remember, we need your funds in order to complete the uh, in order to complete the app and provide the key boxes on campus. So remember, Usher has you parked. And vote for us. Thank you. Thank you. So how did you come up with your pricing that you think that the market will bear? Mm. First of all, I just want to say besides that, I do think this is a great idea. Well, thank you. Thank you. I actually you. can actually see something like this working as being a professor and adjunct and driving around that um, parking is a problem. <laughs> and, and, and you're not alone. Most colleges actually deal with this. So I actually do think that this could happen. Um, so that's why I wanted to understand how you came up with your pricing and, you know, do you think students could actually afford that pricing? Well, most definitely. So the way we uh, came to our pricing is that we found that the average um, price that would be charged to valets in order to park cars was in the range of 2 to $5. So we decided that uh, $4 was in order. But um, we found that, you know, in many other areas, you know, the cost of valeting is extremely high. We were talking $10, $20. Um, it's, it's, it's extremely high, so we just wanted to be able to um, make the service very cheap for users, you know, such as students to be uh, able to use this service. We, um, we feel that uh, $3 is pretty cheap. Yeah, actually, yeah. we did also conduct a survey, and then uh, about 50, uh, 55 to 75 percent, like there were 55 will say definitely, but if you push to uh, a group that we think we can actually attract, 75 percent will definitely go ahead and use. Uh, that for the same price of four dollars. Good answer. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, uh, I have a quick question. One is your model, is it a technology platform business model or is it driven that you're going to be providing all of the services through A through Z? Because I was trying to understand what is really the backbone, what is the model? Is your model one like Uber? Uber is really a technology-based platform. Yes. Yours, uh, is that solely the way you're looking at it? Yes. Or is it that you're providing all services because there's, there's all yeah, kinds yes, of exactly, services exactly, involved exactly. here? So we're not exactly the same as Uber. You know, Uber, they have their own, you know, um, they have their own individuals who drive in cars and perform uh, services of picking individuals up, taking them to locations. We're simply just parking the vehicles. Um, I think you're a bit confused about when I said we're quite similar to an Uber model. Is that what you... No, I, I just wondered if you were going to be providing the services, also hiring the people, or all of them would be independent, would be yeah. like independent. an Uber model. Yeah, you're definitely right. There will be independent contractors. Thank you. However, um, what is, uh, that's why uh, there's no one in the valet industry who's doing that at college campuses, and that's where we would mainly be focusing rather than um, go to a broad market like Uber does. We're just going to focus on the university level. That's very good. Campuses. Thank you. That's a precise, good, good answer. Thank you. Thank you. Do you, when you said on the, um, on the video that, that it's $4 per user and a dollar markup, Yes. What, exactly. what does that mean? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, to be clear about that, it's actually a $3 for users to be able to use the service, and it's a $1 markup. So the markup goes back to the company so that we can continue operation. All right, so the independent contractor who's working for, for you, who's doing the actual work, is there an insurance model that they would actually, someone would insure that independent? I mean, because an Uber driver obviously has auto insurance. 
th this would be a separate type of insurance. Yes, definitely, and that's why we're uh, looking into um, discussions with our insurance companies. We're actually looking to partner with an insurance company rather than, um, and then as we grow, we're looking to self-insure ourselves. Also, we're looking to, um, as a, uh, excuse me, could you just repeat a little bit? Any, any Say it again. Uh, could you just repeat? Your question, please. Well, I, I was just asking how the insurance company, I mean, Uber, obviously everybody who's an Uber driver has auto insurance. This would be, this would be beyond an insur you know, insurance they'd already have. Yeah, uh, we're going to partner with them, but we're also establishing a screening process. So uh, the people who actually, uh, our ushers would actually be um, screened, and as I would have said, a certain uh, standards they, they actually have to meet in order to be able to work for us, which would decrease their liabilities and uh, their likelihood of getting into accidents and stuff like that. Thank you. Thank you. I've got one question also on, uh, on pricing. There seems to be a theme here. Um, and I may have missed it on your slide, but it, it regards volume pricing. Have you considered, or was that included in there, a, a monthly pass or a semester-long pass for students or teachers or administrators? That way, instead of you know, hoping on a daily basis, you've got money in your pocket on a longer basis? Um, definitely, if we if we feel that if we consider that might might actually work best, we might actually like consider employing that. But we found that the best um, the uh, best pos the best thing to do as of now, you know, is just make the charges extremely cheap. You know, for students who you know they, they find themselves on different days where they're late to class. You know, as opposed to just like playing, paying like a full cost for subscription. Okay, thank so you. Like, thank no you problem. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, you were the first ones to pitch. Great visuals, by the way. Thank you so much. Appreciate how, it. How are you feeling about your business pitch? Uh, very good, very good. Because, um, well, as you pointed out about the visuals, I feel like they were a great advantage for us. It really helped us bring the judges in. And I feel like we really caught their attention and uh, our presentation really stuck in their heads. So it was a great opportunity to be going first. Great advantage. Okay, one of the judges said that your idea is possible, it can be done. How does, it ma how does that make you feel, Philip? It boosts my confidence. I, I totally believe our idea is doable, considering that she, she a serial, serial entrepreneur, thought it's doable. I, it makes me believe in us, ourselves. Mm -hmm. Delek, what do you think the judges are saying right now about Usher? I mean, I think they're saying it's a great concept and no one has ever done that before and why they haven't thought about it themselves. Thank you and good <laughs> luck to you guys. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you so much, Usher. That video at the beginning is definitely me in the morning. <laughs> I cannot wait for uh, Usher to appear on Montgomery College's so, soap so yes. we can use that service in the near future. So to vote for Team Usher to win the Audience Choice Award, please text 650-600-9016 with the number 142725. Yes, yes. So during the intermission between each presenter, we're gonna give our judges a brief moment to finish their evaluation forms and take a moment to highlight some of our Enactus projects uh, before you had that chance to talk to those project leaders during the Enactus showcase. So the first project that we're gonna highlight is the One Hen Project. So the One Hen Project has actually been out on our Montgomery College campus for over eight years now. Yes, a very long time. And yeah. so the uh, mission for this project is to empower entrepreneurs around the world by extending uh, microloans of $25 to people in need through a website called Kiva. Now Kiva is a nonprofit organization that hosts a website connecting people in need with potential lenders, creating a global lending community. This year alone, the One Hen Project has funded over 130 loans Three, exceeding $3,000, impacting over 1,000 people in 25 different countries. They've done amazing work. Give them a hand. Yes. If you all have any further questions and want to find out how you guys can get involved, be sure to check out the One Hand uh, Enactus uh, presentation over during the Enactus Showcase during the judges' deliberation. And I also, the hashtag Raptor Tank, are you guys tweeting? I hope you are. Because that first presentation was something else. Yeah. So we're going to be checking Twitter on, on, check? right, right now? now? Yeah, we can check right now. OK, somebody better talk about that NBI Cafe food. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I oh. see some people are going back OK, you're ready right now? OK, I think I see something right here. OK, <laughs> um, so it's at Zach 
Oh, one, two, three. All right. Okay, so Zach said, uh, I love the NBI Cafe food. Um, great first presentation. Well, thank you, Mr. Zach, one, two, three. And we look forward to seeing you guys uh, tweet some more on that hashtag Raptor Sank. Yes. So. All right. So I think we're ready for our next presentation. And for our next contestant, please help me in welcoming Mr. Christopher Swift as he represents his business, Swift, Swift Fitness. Fitness. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chris Swift, and my company is Swift Fitness. Now, before I tell you how Swift Fitness has helped individuals exceed their fitness expectation, let me give you a little bit about my fitness background. At a very early age, I began playing sports such as football and basketball, but it wasn't until high school during my senior year in wrestling where I applied the fundamentals of strength and conditioning as well as nutrition to help me go undefeated for most of the season. During this time period is when I fell in love with the human body and its mechanics. Upon graduating high school, I immediately knew I wanted to pursue a career as a personal trainer, and soon after, I was certified through the National Council of Certified Personal Trainers, and I was employed at Gold's Gym. Now, working for Gold's Gym for about a year and a half, I started picking up on some patterns. Not only did Gold's Gym want me to find the client, sell the client training, and train the client, but I was only receiving a small portion of what the clients were paying. And trust me, the clients were paying skyrocketed prices, on average $80 for an hour session. So combining this feeling of exploitation, with one of my clients' requests for me to uh, train her at an apartment complex gym simply because she just couldn't afford the training anymore, an idea manifested. So now taking action on this idea, I filed for my LLC, created a logo, and purchased both an insurance policy and equipment from mobile personal trainers, and Swift Fitness was now in business. From the start, Swift Fitness has looked to provide affordable and convenient personal training at any location. And without any marketing and through a simple referral program, I've been able to generate and build a large uh, client base that has allowed me to generate $20,000 in revenue my last fiscal year. Year to date, I've done roughly $8,000 and I'm projected to do uh, 30 by the end of the year. Since Swift Fitness is a low cost, high profit business, I've been able to net profit 90% of every average session. So as you can see on the screen, recently I published swiftfitnesstraining.com where a potential client can go on my website, see all the different styles of training that I offer, and he or she can then sign up for their first free introductory session right off the computer. So now you may ask, well, what's next for Swift Fitness? And to that I say, Swift Fitness is currently in the process of partnering with an apartment complex that has a gym facility in order to offer its residents our services at a discounted price. This is what we call a win-win situation. By providing a structured personal training program, Swift Fitness will be promoting health and fitness throughout the community. Not only that, but through free seminars, Swift Fitness will educate the residents on the fundamentals of equipment use and exercise. By doing so, the residents will present themselves as less of a liability, and it will decrease uh, wear and tear on the equipment due to improper use. In return, Swift Fitness will request access to the gym facility to grow this business into something bigger than me, creating jobs for others. I will look to imply, uh, employ one to three trainers per community complex, and unlike commercialized gyms, the trainers will receive most of the sales. So with additional trainers, I'll be able to scale Swift Fitness way quicker than I currently am. And as you see on my financial projections, I assume that each trainer will be able to bring in $20,000 worth of revenue. This equates to eight to 10 sessions per week. So this will allow $7,000 of additional profit from each trainer, given that Swift Fitness will receive 35% of the revenue as compensation for providing a gym facility and clientele. So once I'm successful in implementing Swift Fitness into one uh, residential community, I will then look to use this as a proof of concept to target more. And not only am I looking to provide relief to personal trainers suffering from low margins at commercialized gyms, but I want to provide a service to a community that's tailored towards them and it gives residents an incentive to use their gym facility and get results at the same time. So now within these communities, the opportunity for growth is huge. I will look to target some of the same clients that I already have. Clients that are just tired of overcrowded commercialized gyms, people that are tired of paying an arm and leg for personal training, and people that want to use their fitness facility but just don't know how. So with already two residential communities already interested in implementing Swift Fitness, this is where I need your help to take a one-man show and put Swift Fitness in communities everywhere. That's why we use your seed money to purchase an appropriate insurance policy that will allow me to train within a residential community. I will also allocate money for marketing materials such as flyers, Facebook ads, and I'm even going to customize my website to feature the community that I'm working with so residents can go in there and sign up for the first session. 
So thank you for your time, and whether you invest in Swift Fitness, make sure to train with Swift Fitness. Thank you, that was a great presentation. Appreciate it. Uh, got me excited, I'm ready to train. Well, not exactly right now, but soon. Um, I, I love this idea, that, that picture you put up there of the gym and one of the complexes, that looked like the gym and the complex I used to live in, nobody in it. I, that's, a, that's one of them I train in currently. Yeah, oh, okay. Um, so I'm wondering, like, and like I said, it's a great idea, I think it really could, has a lot of legs. Why hasn't anyone done this in the past? So I think more in like California's place like that, um, okay. this has been done. Um, I, as far as why it's not done in Maryland, I'm not sure, um, okay. but I, this has been implemented numerous times, just in different regions of, of America. Okay, okay, I, the thing these days with apartment buildings is amenities, and every one of these new buildings exactly. has exactly. these phenomenal gym facilities that mm -hmm. no one uses. And, and from training at these gym facilities, what I, I noticed is that, um, you know, they have a, a gym just to say they can have a gym, and then most of the residents don't really use it, and if they go, they don't really know what to do, and they kind of just, you know, just just go to just to go but um you know i think if you combine a gym facility with personal training you can really maximize the gym facility that you have within the community yeah great idea so let me first of all terrific presentation i mean Thank it you. is actually an unmet need that you have described which is fantastic so one of the things that i think you need to think about and um is that clubs like gold's gym you know are popping up more and more frequently as well as LA Fitness and Planet Fitness and they have tried to reduce their pricing so that you're only paying like $15 a month so it's not a lot of money to lay out. Do you feel that you could be competitive enough on your pricing for um, that kind of a Yes you know, so um, as far as program? the commercialized gyms goes they usually uh, you have to um, pay a membership each month. So it's usually around $30 as the standard price for most gyms. But then on top of that, you have to pay for the training. So um, again, working at Gold's Gym, I know for an hour session, uh, we charged $80. Um, you know, it varies, but that's still a lot, a lot of money. The thing with the apartment complex is, since you're already living there, you don't have to pay a monthly membership to use the facility because mm -hmm. it's already uh, part of your package. Um, and then I slashed those prices in half. So uh, one of my training packages start at $35. So. Oh, okay. You know, if, if you're already living in an apartment complex with a gym facility, um, there's no need to then go out of your way to drive to, uh, you know, let's say Gold's Gym, pay that membership, and pay double the, the training when you have it already in your community. No, good answer. Thanks. As, an apart as a major apartment owner here, um, one, I uh, applaud you with your concept and need. A uh, question to you, would your model that you're doing with uh, SWIFT, would you consider also in these apartment communities so that there would be basically group uh, types of training? Yes. So that you... Yeah, definitely. Um, so after I'm able to, you know, get a structured program into the community, I would definitely look to incorporate things as boot camp, stuff of that nature, um, stuff that I do now. Um, but just for the basic model, you know, it would just be individual sessions. Got a question about the, uh, the, the target market, um, similar, uh, because there are many different owners and many levels of apartments from you know mm -hmm. Class A all the way down. Is there a certain level there that you'd be targeting for your services? Within the apartment complex? Yeah, within the apartment, because you can pay a you know, fortune for an apartment and obviously all the way down, and do you see a certain niche that, that would work for your company? So. Um, I'm not targeting just apartment complexes. Like right now, I'm currently speaking with um, a residential community in Urbana that has apartments, townhouses, and homes, and they have different community centers scattered throughout. Um, apartment complexes I'm just very familiar with since I, I train with them. But um, no, I will target the whole, the whole community, the whole complex, um, and try to market myself throughout the whole building. Okay, thank you. Hi, um, so I'm a little bit of a gym rat myself. Um, I love this because it's all about convenience mm -hmm. uh, and you want to make it easy. So I would go back to the idea of making it easy and I, I didn't, I think, capture, how do people sign up with you and how, I mean, I know you had the website, but like scheduling time or with any of your trainers, like. 
Yeah, so that would be embedded in my website. I didn't take okay. too much time out of the presentation sure. to no, go I, through my website. <laughs> but if you go through the bottom, um, there's a sign-up sheet. So you give me your name, stuff like that, just basic information. Um, and then when you sign up, that email will get for or that will get forwarded to me in an email version. And then um, now I'll be in contact with you, and now I can schedule a session, stuff like that. Appreciate it. Chris, I loved your PowerPoint presentation. Thank you, I appreciate it. I try to keep it simple and concise. Okay, how did you think you did? I thought I did good. I thought I delivered you know, my business idea and my presentation well. What do you think about your chances of winning? Um, I hope they're good. I hope they're good. We'll see though, right? Yes, we're gonna find out soon. Thank you and good luck. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was excellent. Man, can't wait to see that in my uh, neighborhood complex. Remember, if you don't uh, invest in Swift Fitness, train with Swift Fitness. <laughs> that was something else. Yeah. Can we read another tweet? Yes, yeah, so I think so. we have, I see some of you guys are hashtag tweeting, the hashtag rapper tank, just like Zach, our friend Zach. And so which one do we have right there? Okay, so Rich tweeted, hashtag rapper tank, Usher wants me to pay the money to park my nice truck. Just, okay. I, I have to be on time for school. Nice, nice. Yep. Anything else? Let's see. Um, hashtag Raptor Tank Swift Fitness is incredibly well thought out, yes. and this guy knows exactly what he's doing. He's done his homework and is impressive. Man, yeah, just a tribute to our contestants and our students here. It's been so, so great, so, so great. Now, glad to see you guys are tweeting, so keep that up. Yes. And if you guys want to vote for Chris, please text the number you guys see on the screen, 650-600-9016. All right, so that's one four, yep, exactly, all right. The next Enactus project we'll be highlighting today is the Macklin Water Project. This is actually one of our newer projects here on our campus. Yes, and so the uh, Montgomery College's water project's goal is to ultimately provide clean water for our students, faculty, and our staff here on campus. Uh, this project hopes to enable a way for less plastic water bottles to be used on campus. So we encourage you guys to please stop by and talk to the project leaders for the water project. And actually, they conducted a survey in over 400 people um, actually submitted and we got results saying that we do need something like this on our campus. Exactly, exactly. And so we also want to mention one more time for uh, the Chris Switz uh, Fitness for the Audience Choice Award. We're going to have that number again provided at the end, uh, when we're, right before judges' deliberations for you guys to vote. That number was 142726. Yes. So 142726 is in your programs. Uh, just keep that in mind one more time. So at this time, I think we're ready to introduce our next competitors. Yes. And so please help me in, in welcoming uh, Amir and Stanley uh, for, the, for their business, Sense Relief. Thank you. All right, guys, so my name is Amir. And I'm Stanley. And our company is called Sense Relief. So one day I was tutoring Stanley about career services and since he's at the time he was doing game board design I told him to come back the next week with the design of an actual game board and he came back with this. So currently the problem is that one in five American youth and adults have some sort of mental illness and this is costing Americans 193.2 billion dollars every single year and according to the National Institute, National Alliance on Mental Illnesses 90% of people who commit suicide have some sort of mental disorder. So you guys are asking, aren't there psychologists already, like a large amount of psychologists out there to treat this problem? Well, something psychologists are using is cognitive behavioral therapy. This is a form of therapy that is acknowledged by the NIH to be effective. And this is kind of like a thought process. So the patient is asked for a situation, and then the psychologist walks through the emotions associated with a certain situation just because the patient has a sort of mental disability or barrier. Then the psychologist talks through the emotions associated and the best way to walk through these emotions and work out the problem. So you guys can see CVT is a bunch of long, boring worksheets. 
So what we've done is change CBT. We made a game board that allows CBT, that allows psychologists and therapists to engage patients of all ages. What we've done is, instead of asking the patient to take initiative, we, we actually hand the patient an applicable real-life situation. And also, we can track progress through a point system that we created. Also, we look forward to empowering and boosting the confidence of patients, which can tra translate towards real-life situations. So as you guys have in front of you, our game board has five spots, and we have four decks total. So you guys have one, an example of one of the decks for anxiety. The four decks are anxiety, depression, anger, and general stress. So this, it starts off in the morning, and in each spot has a different type of situation. So in the morning, there's a problem, a barrier of self-esteem. It goes on to a barrier in an academic or professional workplace. And then after that is a barrier concerning friendships, and then after that is family, and right after at night is a barrier concerning self-doubt. So at each of these spots, the psychologist picks one of the cards pertaining to the spot and the type of disorder that the patient has. And then the psychologist talks through and actually enacts the CBT process. And while doing so, the psychologist asks the patient what they would do in the situation and how they would react and what emotions they would have. And then they talk through the best type of solution that they would come up with. And this game uh, can be played for between 15 and 35 minutes and can be played every week, but does not need to be played every week. So as we said, we have a point system. So the psychologist, after listening to the situation, after talking about the best solution, rates the answer that the patient gives. So on a scale of one to nine, they give points for optimism, one to seven for feasibility, and one to four for creativity of the solution. So this helps us actually keep track of how the psychologist is doing. And although we know that this can differ from each patient and each psychologist, this is actually to help the psychologist see each, how each patient does best and what methods work best for them. So we, so we plan to start off with paper forms of tracking and I move on to some basic Excel sheets for visual representation of the data. And in our long-term plans, we want to have good and strong analytical um, programs so that the, page, the psychologist can actually input the data and have it spit out something very useful for them. So our costs are currently at $20 for each game board. And the game boards we have in front of you were $20. So we be began to plan selling at $75. And our, in our long-term plans, we want to have a lot more data analytics. So the data we're collecting can be really useful for psychologists and patients of all sorts. We also want to incorporate game boards that the patient can take home with the family and play with the family so they don't need to visit the psychologist as often. Also, another aspect that we plan to have is a game board geared towards people who don't have mental disabilities to know what it actually feels like to have one of them. So please help us in changing the environment for people with mental disabilities. There's not that, many, there's not that much innovation and technology being infused into the field of psychology. So please help us in pushing the boundaries and pushing down all these barriers that exist. So, um, first of all, I commend you. Um, it is a, a great idea, um, and it is a recognized problem. Um, and, I, and I think that you are on to something. I think you have a little more work to do. So some of the things that um, I, I kind of like you to think about more than anything is that in the area that you are um, entering, there's um, is, is the medical arena. So there's the, you know, what people are willing to pay and, and what people are willing to get reimbursed for is, um, has to feed into that process. So that is something that unfortunately your pricing would have to accommodate. So, you know, I can't really state on that because I don't really know what that um, schema um, will look like, but that's yeah. something that would have to be thought about. And the other thing is, I think that it's, it's an open door for technology as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, about the pricing, as you said, we actually talked to about eight different psychologists and four of them actually practicing, and they thought that we could actually reach over $150 in selling this to psychologists because, because of what this is meant to do, because of the research put behind it. 
And also in terms of technology, that's one big thing we're looking for. But when a psychologist is playing with a, ch playing with a patient, they don't really want the patient to be on an iPad or be on the computer. They want something engaging and like kind of something like a discussion. So like something that actually s starts a conversation between the patient and the psychologist. Okay. One of the things I didn't understand was you said that first of the cost is twenty dollars. It costs you twenty dollars to make the, the mm -hmm. game. Exactly. And the plan starts at seventy five? Oh we plan to start selling at seventy five dollars. So there isn't a plan. It's it's at the board itself. Oh itself yeah, the board itself. itself, yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. And and how do you know obviously there's research involved, how do you know what questions the card should say? Well, there's a lot of worksheets out there, like open worksheets about cognitive behavior therapy. It's a really common thing. And what we're just doing is transforming that and fixing all the gaps and holes that is f all the problems face with that cognitive behavior therapy. And there's, not, there's a lot of research, actually, as you said, there's a lot of research backing CBT, but at the same time, there's a lot of problems that it has. Yeah, I really like this idea. It's very interesting, very creative. Um, the four, you said psychologists that you had worked with that actually mm -hmm. put it to use, what were the, some of their feedback about uh, the effectiveness of the Well, they were actually like, they were critical in actually designing this. They were like okay. one of the reasons we actually have this right now. And as you guys saw, there was a lot, two of them, there were two testimonials. Mm -hmm. And since this game board actually came in very late, we weren't able to give it out okay. to people. But they actually, they thought it really filled a need. Okay. And I feel like, which is, the more we tw uh, tweaked it, the more it seemed to actually fit the need that is already there. As, a, as the idea of what is, like it was really spontaneous to begin with. But the more we worked on it, the more we saw that there's actually problems with CBT. Very good. Thank you. Thank Just you. in terms of your target market, uh, if you had the funding for this, would, are you assuming you'd go essentially door to door and start speaking to individual psychologists? Or are there associations of psychologists or larger practices where you could do you know, a lot in a little of time? Well, if you look at it, like most psychologists who tend to be more innovative are going to go to like conferences. They're going to read more articles. So we plan to actually focus on those and going out door to door and even offering this at a really cheap price at first just so that we get the first research and the actual proof that it actually works better than previous cognitive behavior therapy. It's like that's an important thing in now. And the fact that the more it's going to, I think it's going to snowball and the more psychologists, since it's like the, the type of innovation that it is, it needs a lot of people to have used it to actually say that it works. So that's all we're focusing on right now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, with, a, with a product that's so, it sounds like it's a one-time sale. Um, with that model of a one-time sale, have you done any analysis of what you think the potential in terms of market is, revenue, and then can it then be possibly adapted for other, other disorders or other things of taking the same platform? Have exactly. You about yeah. that? That's our, our goal is as soon as we get the first like, 20, 25 psychologists, is to expand to having, applying this to more and more um, disorders. And not only that, the data aspect of it, I think, we can use a lot to market. Because once the more data, the more people are using it, the more data is going to be put into this. And I believe at one point the data can be really helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Hey. I love the idea. I think it's really innovative um, and would meet you know, a need out there. I was curious, and um, I was standing in the back of the room for a little bit of your presentation, so maybe I missed it, but how did you determine the $20 uh, cost for the game? Actually, yeah, we ordered the game boards, if you guys can, like, if you guys want to see, and oh. that's how much it's going to cost us. Okay. Yeah, let's actually make. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know. No, that's Great. Fine. Thank you. That's of helpful. course, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Amir, how did you uh, feel about your business pitch? I think we did great, actually. It was really good, especially at the end when they were just asking us some questions to confirm if we, if we actually knew what we were talking about or not, and just to affirm our knowledge of how well thought out it was. I think we did good. Mm -hmm. So like they were surprised, like how come you guys are coming with this type of uh, business idea if you don't have a PhD? You, this mm -hmm. is like in a medical field. Is that how you felt like? Exactly, yeah. They thought that, especially in terms of pricing in our business model, they thought that we hadn't actually talked talk to psychologists, but like once they figured out that we actually talked to a bunch of people on how to price this, they were more relaxed. Stanley, what do you think the judges are saying right now about Sense Relief? 
Okay. I think the judges are talking about how um, the, I think, like, this, this idea would, like, directly help people that is, it's a hard population to help, I think. I think they really like that, that you know, we're, like, we're pushing, you know, e easier conversation starters to solve problems. Yeah. Nice. Well, pretty soon we're going to be finding the winner. Good luck to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Team Sense Relief. Please refer to your pamphlets and text the number 142727 to vote for Sense Relief for the Audience Choice Award. Yes, it was such an innovative idea. Great job, guys. Yes. So I have my phone now. We're going to check uh, Twitter and all these social media to see uh, who's been using that hashtag Rapstank. Okay, I see the uh, Rockville Student Senate. Thank you guys. Okay, so we have the Rockville Student Senate here. We have people, powerful people in our uh, campus in attendance today. Thank you. They say <laughs> for supporting the students. Rapture Tank is such a, a great event. All right, well, thank you guys for that. Thank you. Just clap that up, clap that up. Thank you very much. <laughs> the next an act, an actus project we're going to highlight is going to be the Literacy Project. The Literacy Project's overall goal is to create a stronger community for ESOL students. ESOL standing for English for speakers of other languages, and this community of students in high schools and in um, middle schools has grown over the past six years. Yes, exactly. And so to raise funding for the ESOL students in their program, the Literacy Project publish and sell books. Now you ask, so how is this done? Well, the project has high school students write the, uh, stories about their first day of school in their native language and later is going to be translated into English. But the cool thing about this project is that they partnered with the uh, elementary sc school, the third grade class from South Lake Elementary School, which is a feeder school to Watkins the Mill, and then have those students draw illustrations to accompany their stories. And then ultimately, we'll, they'll sell the books and then the revenue will be used to better those in that ESOL programs. Yes, and you guys can visit the Literacy Project, Project Leaders, to your right, and we encourage you guys to see how you can get involved, or if you're interested, just to see how you can help out with the project. Yes, exactly, exactly. So the next contestant we would like to introduce is Nabel with his business, Evo. Hey everyone, my name is Nabil Asayas, and the name of my app is called Evo. So nowadays, whenever you want to go out with a friend, the very first thing you ask them is, what do you want to do, or where do you want to go? And usually your friend will respond, I don't know, what do you want to do? That creates a back and forth conversation, which presents a problem. We at Evo want to help you solve this problem. Evo will be the first social outing app of its kind. Our goal is to bring people together to go to the best venues within our community at affordable prices. Evo is going to redefine how friends go out together to have fun, redefine how complete strangers meet and try new experiences, and redefine how singles and couples go out on dates. So now I'm going to discuss how we're going to go about doing this. First, before even using the app, Users will have to answer a questionnaire, and based on that questionnaire, we'll present places to them that correspond with their interests. Now, say for example, you don't like any of the places we suggested. No problem. You can click the filter button in the upper right hand corner, and then you can select the category at, in which the outing ideas will be presented to you. Next, you select the place you want to go. We present the rating on how popular it is in our community, a description of the place in case you're a little bit curious and you want to get to know what it is about. And what makes this so special is the fact that we're integrating Groupon, so you'll be receiving a discount to go out to these special places within our community. Every time a consumer buys a Groupon coupon through us, we'll be getting a 10% commission. And also there in the upper right hand corner, there's a wish list button in case you want to save the venue for another day. Now let's click Match Me. We'll present you with users that not only have similar interests to you, but want to go out to the same place as you. This is to enhance the user's experience on, on these amazing adventures you're going to go on. Now let's talk about marketing. We'll initially launch the app at Montgomery College, not only to get immediate user feedback to improve the app, 
but students will feel a lot more safer going out with another individual who's also a student rather than a complete stranger. And this is our two-year projections. By month nine, we believe we'll break even, and going into year two, we'll be investing more of our funds into marketing, not only to hit our market audience at different colleges and universities, but to generate a larger user, active user base. So I conducted a campus-wide survey asking what, is it, what, is, what are our users looking for in our app? The top five features our users are looking for are matchmaking or social pairing, finding a place to go out, discounts, messaging, and video calls. We found out one third of our users would like an app to help them find a date or find someone to go out with and have fun with. We also found that almost 50% of our users want an app to plan out their dates or plan out their outings because we can't always think of the places we want to go or the things that we'd like to do. And what re-emphasizes that is when we ask the question when choosing a date, they want it to be spontaneous. 51% of our surveyors said they want it to be spontaneous. Because generally when we want to go out, we have a vague idea of what we want to do, but again, we don't always know what exactly we want to do. By taking a questionnaire, we'll be presenting these users with venues that correspond to their interests. And after that, we'll be showing them discounts that they can get at these venues. And finally, we'll be matching them with other people who have similar interests that also want to go to these venues. With your $2,500 investment, we'll be investing our efforts towards increasing our marketing effort towards other universities and schools to not only hit different market audiences, but again, to increase our, to increase our um, target audience. This is my uh, contact information. Is there any questions? So I have two questions. I'm sorry, did I jump in? Um, and admittedly, I'm old, so bear with me here. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, do you already have the app developed? That no, not yet. OK. I'm looking for a technical co-founder that's willing to work with me. OK. For oh, you 40. said that in the original video, right? Got yeah. it. OK, and then, so this is my, the old perspective. So mm -hmm. um, the, is this match, is this really a dating app? or you offer other things like the discounts and helping plan, so but you talk about the matchmaking and mm -hmm. would you just show up and go with someone randomly and don't know that much about them? So this is not just a dating app, it's a social outing app. So okay. we're going to help couples find places to go, but we'll also help people find places to go okay. in the community. So there isn't necessarily a romantic- No, it doesn't under. have to be. Okay. If the user wants to pursue someone romantically, that's completely up to them. <laughs> but yeah, our goal is to just get people out and about at, in our local community because we always come by, like we always pass by these amazing places we never go into because right. no one's ever recommended it to us. Right. But we know nothing about them. Right. Thank you. Good answers. Appreciate it. No problem. Um, so I'm gonna. Um, first of all, great idea, that, and you did really good research. Um, so I, I do a lot of advising to technical companies. Um, and um, probably what you don't realize is that in order to bring the information to the user, you actually have to have a lot of technology to crowdsource the information and update the information on a daily basis. Right. So that's the first thing you have to think about. Secondly, is that there, it is a very, very crowded space. So my advice is that you pick one, either you go after the more of what am I gonna do tonight, or you go after the dating space, because in both spaces, they're equally crowded. So you kind of have to pick an angle. You really can't do both, people have tried. There's a couple of social startups in this area of DC actually that have tried and have not done well. Mm -hmm. So just, I would be more focused, but um, it's possible. And the third thing you have to think about is the cost of acquisition of a user is really expensive. Mm -hmm. um, people used to think that I create an app out there, I'm gonna get lots of downloads. I can tell you from someone that has designed an app in the food space, um, 
and we uh, switched to a business side because the cost of acquisition went from $52 per user, we got it down to about $18 per user, and even at that, it's still expensive. So, no, because nobody's paying for apps anymore. Right. So you can't charge for an app, so you have to find a way to kind of create a little bit of revenue to pay for that, offset that cost of acquisition. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you have no money. So, just to think about these so, things. So, I mean, the app is for free. Right. Um, We'll just be integrating Groupon to provide discounts, but... Right. So that's where I'm thinking that you would probably be more successful if you moved away from the dating side mm -hmm. and did something specific to college campuses, because I haven't seen a lot of... In, I, I certainly haven't seen anything here, and I'm on a couple of panels with technology and haven't seen too much focusing on a college campus mm -hmm. of bringing people together, what are we going to do tonight, and bringing bargain ideas of how to spend our money wisely right. as an opportunity, which you could absolutely do in a similar model. It's just things to think about. Thank you so much. I, I, I really like the idea. I kind of thought that was what you were saying, though. It was going to be focused on the college campus, is that correct? Yeah, we're going to initially start at Okay, and mm -hmm. kind of work with the defined community. Yeah, Okay. Exactly. And, and things that are kind of local to that community exactly. in order to coordinate people to go out to. Mm -hmm. Does that make, is that kind of what it yeah. was? And that, so I took from that a little bit of the planning might be, hey, um, you know, I want to do this, this, this tonight. Mm -hmm. um, and hey, look at this. There's like 10 other people who want to do this and eight exactly. people who want to do this and seven that want to do. And across that, there's six common. And we could all go out and have a great time. Is that kind of how it works? Yeah. I, I like that idea. I think that makes a, that makes a lot of sense. And, and let me tell you, I like the idea as well. But um, and, and I think, first off, whether it's a, a dating app or not, if somebody might already know somebody, you know, and, and both of you decide that, you know, you think, well, I'd like to go to the Nationals game. I don't know if anybody else wants to go and exactly. the dorm next to you, you know, somebody who you already know. But on the one thing you said was you said, I think you said on the ninth month you're going to break even. Yeah. How does that work? How do you know that? So we did projections based off of downloads and the amount of revenue. So when I did the survey, I asked, what is the average amount people would spend on a first date versus their average date? And the average amount people would like to spend was about $45. So we did math where basically we made the equation um, based on the population. And we also added the 10% taking off of the $45. And we did that per month to see how much we'd make. And eventually, we became profitable after nine months. But you would get the $45? I thought the, no, you were getting it no, from the so, Groupon. No, that, that's what I was saying. So basically, we take 10% out of the 45 Because initially, we won't have a huge user base. And so we're going to have to integrate Groupon's coupons. But when our active user base is large enough, we can actually discontinue our service with Groupon and actually go to these local restaurants and establishments one on one. And do a Groupon yourself. Exactly. I got gotcha. you. OK. Quick question. And first, I want to commend you for doing the uh, the campus-wide survey. I mean, it's very easy to say I have an idea and I'm going to run with it, but you actually, you know, talk to the uh, your target market. So good for you to, for doing that. Um, and the question is really, who do you see is your primary competition? Because as has been mentioned, you know, there's dating and then there's outings and various other things. Who do you consider the main competition for your product? Um, I believe that it's a mixture of. Yelp and Tinder because of the fact that we're doing matchmaking but at the same time we're providing places you can go and our focus is just to get people from behind their phones to go out and then have a good night. So it's, it's a little bit of both. So I did my main target analysis on um, dating apps because that's what people are going to be using it for besides going out. It's to find someone else to go out with and have fun. So. Nabil, how are you feeling right now? I'm anxious. I'm, I'm feeling a lot of different ways, but I'm, I'm happy it's over, you know? So your business idea requires a large investment. Do you think the judges will go for it? Um, I mean, when it comes to businesses, it's all about low cost and efficiency. So maybe the other businesses were a lot more cost efficient. I mean, who knows? I hope they do. How about the chances of winning? Honestly, uh, I did well, but I think the only two people 
I had, I guess, are my challengers or like my competitors are um, Chris with the Swift Fitness and Christina with Christina's Creations. They did an amazing job. So if I can get those, beat those two, then I'm in there. We're going to find out soon. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Nabel. Awesome. The way to vote for um, Evo is to text the number 650-600-9016 and please refer to the number in your pamphlet if you'd like to vote for him. Wasn't that awesome? Yes. Where do you want to go? I don't, uh, know, I don't know. I don't know where you want to go. Like exactly. So there's <laughs> definitely a market uh, out, out for that. Yes. And that was definitely great. So the next Enactus project that we're going to highlight is our One Heart project. Yes, the One Heart Project does a great job of working in our local community to effectively try and uh, motivate, inspire, and teach homeless individuals. Exactly, okay. So this project also aims to assist the individuals in these local homeless shelters to either find employment or go back to school and further their education. Through bi-weekly bi workshops at the Stepping Stone Shelter in Rockville, Maryland, the One Hint Project covers topics such as resume building and mock interviews. So they do such a great work. Yes. So the One Heart Table is located on the right side of the Theater Arts Arena. And during the judges' del deliberation, we encourage you all to stop by and see how you can get involved. I have one quick question. So yes. have you had, got any more tweets? Um, let's see. Let's check that out. I think okay. I clicked on it while I was. OK, so we have here. And all right. Yep, let's okay. see. Oh. All right. Yeah, we did get some tweets. Yeah. And it, seems, it seems as if uh, Equin, um, he, she, wow, is <laughs> Evo the fusion of Yelp and Tinder? Possibly. Possibly. And as she tweeted that out. Before the bef judges even mentioned that. And before, so yeah, so that cool. is hand in hand. That is an awesome tweet, <laughs> an awesome side of the bell. You did a great job conveying your message to the audience yes. so they know what that product is. All right. So keep that up. Hashtag Raptors Hank. And the next team we would like to introduce is Marcos and Constantine introducing their business, uh, Food for Better Use. Hello guys, uh, my name is Konstantin Sarznev. And my name is Marcos Salazar. And we're Food, Food for, for Better, better Use. Mm -hmm. uh, so who of you guys likes to go to restaurants? All right, I see a lot of you, me too. So by going to restaurants, I noticed that a lot of uh, restaurants waste a, uh, waste a lot of food, as well as uh, farmers and households. Uh, so America is the largest food consumer in the world, and as well as there is 40% of food that's being wasted every year. Uh, however, despite of this high percentage, there is 13.1 million of children that live at food unsecured households. And specifically in this area, there is 10% of Marylanders that live below the poverty line. But don't worry, we have a solution for that. So, non uh, uh, so Food for Better Use is a non-profit organization, and our goal is to reduce food, uh, reduce food waste and uh, hunger in our societies by uh, connecting food sh uh, uh, shelters and local businesses, uh, as well as uh, lowering ecological footprint, uh, because each American uh, throws about 1,200 pounds uh, yearly of organic uh, uh, food that can be composed. So how we got the idea for the business? When I was little, my parents would always tell me to make sure you eat all your food and don't waste any food. And it's true around, in, 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 all around the country and in our communities that people don't know when their next meal is and go hungry. So my business partner, Constantine, I met him in our Business 101 class. And uh, he's a manager for a furniture company as well as a, a tennis coach in our community. So and this is my partner, Marco Saloso. Uh, he has a really good experience with a nonprofit. He fully understands how nonprofit works and operate. As well, uh, his parents uh, own a restaurant business, so we know how to make connection with businesses uh, to make a partnership with us. As well, he has a great leadership experience uh, with uh, sport and student activities. So, and here is our mentors who are supporting us on our way uh, with uh, accounting and uh, nonprofit, as well as. Uh, law and uh, bu business management. So some of us here eats food, <laughs> but uh, food, the food market is a large market. We consume about 2,000 pounds of food, making up mostly of fruits, vegetables, and dairy products. And the United States is actually the world's largest consumer of food uh, waste and uh, consumed. So. All right, so here's a picture explaining our business. So we're going to be make making partnerships with businesses, and they're going to um, message us on our website and letting us know what kind of food they have and how much and our, uh, our workers are volunteers 
and they will go to the businesses, picking up the food, delivering it directly from the business to the shelters, helping feed the uh, people in need. So our SWOT analysis is strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So our strengths are that we are a nonprofit organization and we're working locally in Rockville, as well as having volunteers to, uh, as our workforce. And this is a big need in our area because we actually spoke to uh, a homeless person while we were walking around Rockville and he said he has to go to DC every day to get food. And one of our weaknesses is that uh, we uh, might have a short staff, volunteers throughout the year, but that's not a big problem. Our opportunities is that we can learn from other nonprofits and other shelters uh, from their experiences and we can improve our plan and recreate this in other areas around our communities and around the country. Our threats are that there are other uh, nonprofits doing something similar to this. However, we're all working towards the same goal of helping the people in need. All right, so how are we going to use seed mining? So basically, we need to uh, support our low cost of operation by maintaining our website, uh, as well as uh, shipping and packaging, uh, coolers. We need to have a buy coolers, uh, gas, and as well, we'll have some marketing ad, uh, expenditures, uh, like uh, ads promotion and SEO. And as well, we have some uh, another examples like uh, headquarters and paperwork. So how are we going to make money? So basically, we are going to charge uh, small uh, fee businesses uh, who are going to donate uh, food. Um, so by, but that instead of that, we are going to give them uh, tax deductible uh, charitable contributions. So uh, at the end of the year, uh, they're going to take money. So we're not, we're, they're going to uh, make a profit out of this. And on top of that, we're getting uh, donations from our online, online crowdfunding, as well as uh, campaigns with uh, church and schools. And we will be having a student who has uh, to have a LLC hours uh, because they have 75 hours to graduate from the high school. So there are similar organizations that do this. They're all located in, D most of them are located in DC, like DC Central Kitchen, some and Food Man uh, and Mana. And we're gonna have a low cost of operations and we're working locally in our community. So we're gonna go quick, we're gonna have quick uh, transportation of the food from the restaurants to the shelters. And we already talked to a lot of businesses in Rockville and most of them are happy to join and, and uh, donate their food. All right, so here's our accomplishments and progress. We already speak with 20 uh, restaurants and they're willing to help with us. It's not a whole list, it's part of the list. As well, we already have a nonprofit and LLC and our LLC are going to own nonprofit because of the liability issues. As well, uh, we, can, uh, we can already connect, uh, collect donations through our website and we already have a social media. So, uh, <laughs> uh, take an action to reduce food waste and hunger in our society with food, food for, for better, better use. use. Thank you very much. First of all, you two are very charismatic and likable, and you seem passionate about this. So that comes across and always helps sell a good idea. Um, I was a little confused, and maybe you can help clarify. You're charging a small fee to the businesses that donate the food? Yes, that's yeah, correct. Yeah, correct. We're going to, like, to charge them like, uh, from 10 to $20 uh, to uh, bring the food to the shelters. And instead of that, we're going to give them a tax-deductible contribution on the food that they donate. Okay. So they will take uh, money from the taxes. Uh, so they actually will go to take a profit out of this. So just my limited experience, a couple of things. These restaurants and other you know, food providers, I think, are going to want to be getting rid of this food. If not, they're just going to throw it away. Yeah. So I just wonder that fee, how reasonable that is. And if you're calling it a fee, you can't then make it a uh, deduction or a contribution. So you just make sure you have that straight. Um, and I, look, I have limited knowledge on this, but it, I worked in the food business a really long time. <laughs> that was how I got through college and beyond. And so I just don't know if restaurants, I just don't know if they'd be willing to pay that. But I think there are other ways to get them involved. And um, you know, certainly if they just donate, um, giving them the marketing and the exposure that they're supporting the community at large yeah. might be a better tactic. But I mean, you guys have certainly done your homework and research, so I'll leave that. Yeah, you know, well, to you to figure well, out. We'll, yeah, we will promote them, the right. restaurants, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love the idea. Um, Thank you. And just to kind of follow on that point, one thing to think about is the, the food, if they would have thrown it away anyway, um, what you're helping them to do is divert from their waste stream. So waste stream is fairly expensive for a restaurant, right? They have to pay someone to come and collect mm -hmm. the trash every day. 
And so whatever you can look at in terms of percentage reduction in that, that waste stream is a savings to them on that cost, and there may be a way to get some of that funding into your organization. So that's something to think about from that perspective. Yeah, thank you. Um, but I, I lo love the idea, and I think it's got a lot of potential, particularly in small communities. I was worried at first about competition, because I, I know about some, and, and uh, DC Central Kitchen, I know they're huge yeah, organizations mm -hmm. yeah. and operations, but something local, I think, might have a, a real good shot. Yeah, correct. So, mm -hmm. Thank uh, you. Nice idea. Mm -hmm. If I, first off, I think it's a, a great idea and it's a, and it's a wonderful uh, thought, but there are other groups in this area that are doing this. I mean, MANA is in Rockville, and, uh, and there's other, I know of other, other uh, organizations that are doing it. But you also have additional expense. I mean, you're going to have to get a truck. You just can't have it in somebody's car. I mean, and if, if a food provider provides you that food, you just can't necessarily take it to the next spot. You're going to have to figure out how to how to divide it up. And you know, if, if somebody gives you a, a dozen heads of lettuce, you're not you need it to you need another facility. So there's there's expense involved with this. And whether it has to have a refrigerated uh, facility, I mean, there's there are things that, that that are expensive involved with these things. And as I say, it's a great idea, but there's. You, you, somehow, even though if it's a nonprofit, if you all are going to receive a salary from it, then somehow you have to have enough profit or enough enough revenue so that you can that you can live. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to first of all um, commend you. I think it's a fantastic idea. And yes, I agree. There are people doing things like this. However, a couple of points you brought out which I thought were amazing. One, fantastic use of students. I mean, there's one way of saving on employees is that they are actually donating their time. Yeah. That is fantastic. Second is you are truly helping the community. Um, and I'm sure there is a way of finding the resources that you would need from a truck and whatnot. So I commend you. I, I love this presentation. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, and my question would be similar to what uh, Sydney was saying. If you've really looked into, I mean, I assume there's licenses and things like that. I mean, some of this food is, per, you know, perishable, and so there's uh, there's things you, that that have to be looked into and researched. Have you have you checked into all that? There has to be yeah. a uh, there has to be a food manager at the site when we're get packaging the food over from the businesses to the shelters. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, there's there's regulations with the food that have to be set kept at certain temperatures and proper containers. So, does, does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Marcus, what did you think about the feedback from the judges? I thought the feedback was good. Uh, it was all to improve our business, and it's good criticism. All of it's just wisdom for us to improve on. Constantine, I heard one of the judges saying that uh, there are a lot of business out there doing what you guys are proposing. So is that a challenge for you? Uh, it's not really a challenge because we're working on uh, all the, the same purpose and we can make partnership with them. Uh, however, there's still uh, demand in this area because most of the home uh, shelters go into DC to get their food. Okay, so now the judges are deciding who's going to be the winner. Uh, what are your chances? I mean, there's a lot of good ideas out there. We're just hoping to win, and we're doing our best. And even if uh, we don't win, we're going to keep working at it. Constantine? Yeah, I think we have uh, good chances. Yeah, however, if we want to go with, we still are going to realize this idea. Okay, yeah. thank you, and good luck to you guys. Thank you very much. That was a great presentation. S very good, very good. Thank you, team, for better use. That was excellent. Yes. Man, kind of made me a little hungry, made me want to do something good for the community at the same time. Speaking of food, the MBI Cafe, don't forget about that. We're almost close to the last presentation, and so during the judge deliberation, we encourage you guys to stop by the table in the back. All right, so we have some important information for you guys. If you guys would like to see Team Food for Better Use win the Audience Choice Award, that $500, please remember to uh, check out the number to text to the number at the bottom of the screen in your program, okay? Yes. So in your program, make sure you text the correct number to that bottom number on the screen. If you'd like to see Food for Better Use, win that $500 Audience Choice Award. Okay, so the, uh, the next Enactus project we're going to highlight is the Hunger Alleviation Project. Yes, the Hunger, Hunger Alleviation Project conducts monthly food drives and strives to raise awareness of, of the issue of hunger on our campus. 
This project also supports the MC Food Pantry by improving its inventory, packaging, and distribution system. The ultimate goal of the Hunger Alleviation Project is to address the needs of the students on campus who don't have the financial resources to simply buy meals throughout the day. <clears throat> and unfortunately, this can affect their um, progress in school. So the Hunger, Allevi Hunger Alleviation Project does their best to try to combat that issue. Exactly. So we're close to that deliberation period. So if you'd like to find out more information on the Hunger Alleviation pro Project and see how you guys can get involved, please refer to their uh, trifold during the enacted showcase. Yes. <laughs> so we are to our last contestant of the night. Last but not least. So please help me in welcoming Ms. Christina Wright to introduce to, her, to introduce to you her business, Christina's Creations. Hi, I'm Christina, and my business is Christina's Creations and we provide customized baby bedding nursery collections from one mother's hand to another mother's heart. We offer unique styles, colors, and themes at a competitive price while promoting corporate social responsibility. Um, I'm sure you're all wondering who am I and why am I here? Um, well, I'm gonna start with my story. When I was pregnant with my youngest daughter, Paisley, I wanted to get for her um, a unique and stylish bedding collection set. And I went to the store and I didn't find anything I liked so I ended up making her one myself. I'm also a mother of three. I'm an equestrian, a nature lover, a business student, and an aspiring entrepreneur. My products include hand-sewn blankets, pillows, bumper pads, and crib skirts. Uh, the first collection I would like to talk about is Young and the Rest collection, which was inspired by my three children. Each of the colors and themes um, has a little bit of their personalities intertwined into them. Um, the profit or the proceeds of this uh, collection will go to the Tree House of Rockville, Maryland. The next collection is Love in the Country Life. Um, it features a pink camouflage or blue, um, a horse themed collection, and a sapling collection, which is um, a lot of your nature um, themes. And the proceeds of the sapling collection will go to Casey's Trees, which help to provide um, trees in the metro DC area. In the future, I'd like to provide other collections, such as military themed, um, holiday themed, um, sports teams. And if a customer has a preference, I would like to fit that need. The quality is something that I'm, I am very much about. I like to offer my customers a preference of either cotton flint or fleece with customizable themes, colors, styles, and, and sizes. Everything is hand sewn. We also support local and nonprofit organizations. And I also offer personalized hand embroidery, which is also done by hand, not a machine. So who are my buyers? Well, I would really like to um, have expectant mothers um, buy my products because that's extremely important to me. Also parents for their children as birthday gifts, seasonal decorators, um, sports teams collectors, nature lovers, um, and horse lovers. As of right now, I'm working out of my mother-in-law's formal dining room and I would like for some of the um, seed money to go toward um, a bigger um, business area. And also I'd like to have more than one sewing machine. I'd like to have um, a little bit more uh, money to buy different types of fabrics. And I would also like help with advertising and marketing, such as starting an Etsy store. <laughs> this is my uh, first year projections. Even if I sell one blanket at $63, I would still be making profit. That price includes not only a 2% donation, it also includes the cost of the materials and also um, the cost of hourly labor. For my first year, I'd like to sell a total of six units. The second year, I'd like to tell, sell a total of 16 units, which would be a variety of blankets, um, pillows, um, collections, and also the bumper pads. And for my third year collect, or sorry, my, my third year projection, I'd like to tell, sell a total, a total of um, 50 units, which would allow me to have about $1,500 in profit. 
And as far as growth goes, of course, every business wants to have growth, and that's something I'm aspiring for. Um, instead of having an actual um, location, I would like to rent out local space and businesses such as churches, schools, um, if there's any fire stations that can rent me space. As far as employment, I would love to be able to hire women in need, veterans, and students. And I'm also in the process of partnering with local businesses to where I can display my products for sale. And in the future, I'd like to expand my product line to include stuffed animals, crib sheets, and a diaper organizer. So I hope you can see that from one mother's hand to another mother's heart, the My Products will show love in every single stitch, provide the customer with excellent quality, and at an affordable price. Thank you. <laughs> So I will just say, um, as someone that used to sew, it's nothing like handmade items. And people don't do it anymore. We live in a society of everything is bought and there's no more custom made. So I think what you've done is amazing. I love it. Um, and I think you have lots of opportunity. You could do Etsy, you could have your own e-commerce site uh, because the world is open to you. Uh, and there is not a lot of this kind of stuff out there. So, I well agree. done. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, <laughs> call on me. Call on me. Uh, I love you took a, a real life experience and turned it around, you know, what we might call, I don't know, quote unquote, a weakness and turned it into a strength and came up with this. Um, and being a mom of three, uh, you obviously have some practical experience. So I love that. I also think uh, in all of you are, but setting a great example for your kids that you know, you're, you're trying to um, you know, start your business, go to school, do all this. It, it's very impressive. Thank you. Um, one, I commend you because um, one of what you're doing, and as Iris said, to in this day and age of somebody that really wants to put the love as well as the labor, uh, clearly it is a very tough model, um, but uh, everything you've done, I commend you in terms of how you've approached it as well as your product. Congratulations. Thank you. A father of three, I, I have no idea how to sew anything. <laughs> <laughs> However, I appreciate something that is high quality. I, I, just, I just love that. It brings back a lot of memories for me. Um, and and it, it, I saw on the, the scale there you wanted to kind of get to, what was it, 3,000 of revenue towards the kind of second or third year. Do you have a vision of it being any, any larger than that maybe? I mean, do you think you could do more if you had some more help or more Absolutely. More equipment? There's definitely a niche for this type of thing, especially with the amount of infant gross. Yeah. And I've done a lot of research in the Montgomery County area, and I could even expand out to um, across the country or even internationally. Sure, sure. Um, there are other companies on the West Coast that do the same thing, mm -hmm. but they're on a larger scale. Sure. Um, and I still want to provide my customers with a handmade item and not go to a factory made. So that's um, where they're doing factory made and I'm just doing, you know, if it's three or four people in one room, we're sewing everything by hand to make sure, mm -hmm. you know, and we can also see every single detail and if there's, um, you know, like a missed stitch or something, we can go right. back and fix it. Right. I, I think it's a fantastic idea. I think there's a huge market for uh, quality products and coming back to local, locally made products as opposed to things that are, you know, manufactured in a, in a large factory. So I think it's a great idea. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I just had one question. Yeah, this, these really are beautiful. I'm trying to figure out a way that I can stuff this under my suit and walk out of here. <laughs> um, you said you're, you hope to sell six this year and then 16 next year. So how do you reach your target market? What's your game plan for, for finding customers? I, I, may, I may have missed it. Finding customers? Yeah, how are you going to find the 16 people to sell to next year? Well, um, I actually live in an area where um, we do, they have a lot of like homemade craft shows. And I've actually caught, talked to a couple of the people that host them. And they want me to kind of come up, and, up there and set up like a booth for free. And one of the same stores wants me to come in and actually um, advertise my collections for sale in her store. Um, and also online sales, like I, I can start a Facebook page and an Etsy page. So I have a lot of different opportunity, um, mainly just a lot of craft shows. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. 
I have to applaud you as well. I think it's a great idea and it's a wonderful product. But the, the one concern is because you're doing all the work yourself, I, I guess. I mean, so even if you had other sales, how are you going to produce it? How long does it take you to make a pillow? Um, a pillow takes less than 30 minutes. Um, a does blanket, it really? yeah. And actually, um, the little case took me about 10 minutes when my daughter was sleeping. <laughs> um, a blanket takes about four hours. Um, right. Money. <laughs> right, right, ex exactly. Yeah, and also um, the price of the fabric will really differ too, so I kind of have to figure out, you know. But um, to go back to, I'm sorry, what was your question again? I kind of. Well, it was just that, <laughs> that even if you had more sales, how could you get the product? And if you, if you can do it that quickly, then you really could. I mean, yeah. yeah. And honestly, the seed money would help me to hire more people to help, you know. Um, I've talked to the House of Ruth. Um, and they're, they are going to let me bring in like a mobile business to help the women there that can't exactly go out and find a normal job. Even though I'm not able to pay them a lot of money, it's still a job. And they can do it while they're there. Um, so I would like to hire on, you know, three or four more people. Um, and as I expand, increase my pay for them. One reflection. So I had uh, an exit many years ago, not too many years ago, from when I worked and designed a drug. And I started a company called Fabric Creations, and I decided to do some sewing. And you know what? In three years' time, I made $62,000 from doing custom drapes and custom things. So, oh yeah, there's money out there, and people will pay. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> Thank you. You were the last one to do your business pitch. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling really relieved that it's over. I have a little bit of stage fright, and <laughs> um, I know I stumbled over a few of my words, but I think I presented my idea pretty clearly. The judges loved your business idea. Yes, they did, and that was, I was not expecting that at all. Um, but I made sure to come in strong with a really strong presentation, especially highlighting um, yearly projections. So what do you think about your chances of winning? Um, well, honestly, there is a chance I may win, there's a chance I may lose, but I just still see this as a great opportunity no matter what. Thank you, and good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Christina. What a wonderful presentation. Excellent job. I have a little cousin uh, in Richmond, Virginia that would love the Boys for Boys collection. Um, so awesome job once again. <laughs> we want to remind you guys, if you would like to see um, Miss Christina win the Audience Choice Award, that $500 prize, to, to check the number in the pamphlet in, in the program as well, and text the number on the bottom of the screen, and, and it's included there. At this time, the judges will review and deliberate on tonight's winners. So judges, whenever you finish filling out your forms, please follow our ambassadors to the deliberation room. Yes. So our award ceremony will begin at 6.15, and we have some more news about the Audience Choice Award and when you can vote for that. So because it's almost 6 right now, we decided to push the Audience Choice to 6.15, yes. so you guys still have a chance to submit your choice for the audience. Yes, so those numbers are also in the pamphlet. And so as you're enjoying the MBI Cafe food, talking to our NACTUS project leaders, uh, make sure to uh, take a look at it, vote and take a look at the screen for the correct numbers if you do not have a program. Yes, and also, you guys, I hope you saw the wheel over there at the MBI Cafe table. You guys can win coupons for the MBI Cafe and some cool prizes. So please stop by. Okay, we'll see you guys back in a little bit. Yep. All right, so we have some exciting news. The results are in. Yes, I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> Almost like American Idol. Before <laughs> we uh, go, commence with our award ceremony, our Raptor Tank uh, Program Director and Faculty Advisor would like to share a few remarks. So please help me in welcoming Professor Linda Youngatop and MBI Director, Mr. Steve Lang. <laughs> Wow, didn't our contestants do a great job tonight? 
No matter what the results are, each and every participant deserves credit for all their hard work over the past year. So let's give one more round of applause for all of our finalists today. <laughs> Raptor Tank is a collaboration between the multiple stakeholders across MC that provides mentorship, workshops, and over $5,500 in seed money to help MC students pursue their dream of starting and growing a business. What's really cool about that $5,500 is it comes from a student business here on our campus, the MBI Cafe. The, stu the students in the Macklin Business Institute, they successfully run a We Proudly Serve Starbucks and they share their profits with their peers here at Montgomery College to help them start or grow a business. Since Raptor... <laughs> Since Raptor Tank is also one of our MC Enactus projects, this means that students have provided opportunities to build a range of skills. They have been instrumental in leadership development and implementation of this year-long program. We've also had multiple students uh, participate in the planning, coordination, marketing, management, and workshop presentations that have empowered our student participants behind the scenes. Um, with important business and communication skills. Without the support of these students, we wouldn't be here today. We'd like to recognize our students. So, if you're a student who helped with the MBI Cafe or an actress, please stand. Yay. Thank you for all of your hard work in making this event possible. I would also like to give a special shout out to our Raptor Tank co-leaders, Austin and Tahina. <laughs> for the wonderful job that they did not only today, but all year long. We would like to thank our judges who took time out of their business, busy schedules to support our students. Please join me in thanking uh, Mr. David Pop in his second year of being a Raptor Tank judge. Miss Iris Sherman, <laughs> Mr. Scott Nordheimer, <laughs> Councilman Sidney Katz, <laughs> and our only judge to be here for all three years and in his second year's head judge, Mr. Bill Keating. <laughs> We would also like to ask the faculty and staff that work to develop and continue to run the Raptor Tank to please stand. Stand up. <laughs> we want to thank the Rockville Business Program's faculty, including Joanne Frazier, Susan Blumen, Georgia Buckles, and Brian Bake for all their help in this process. We're also missing a special member of our faculty uh, who couldn't be with us tonight, um, who was really uh, one of the main inspirations for this competition, and we, uh, we want to thank uh, Professor Hannah Weiser. We would also like to give special recognition to the Macklin Business Institute's own Lindsay Yair for her tireless work behind the scenes, helping to make today's events a true success. And our college and campus have great leadership. Uh, we'd like to recognize our president, Dr. Darian Pollard, our campus VP and provost, uh, Dr. Kimberly Kelly, who gave a great welcome, uh, Dean Kathy McKellian, and all the administration and faculty at the college for supporting this important event. You're a big reason this event is, has been a success for three years in a row. MCTV has been a wonderful partner throughout the process which allows us to share this program with a broader audience through TV and film. We would like to extend a special thanks to all the students who helped MT MCTV, the entire MCTV staff and production crew, and to Danielle Stecky, Brian O'Neill, and Joe Thompson for their support during and planning for Raptor Tank. Finally, we'd like to thank MC Communications for all of their help and support as well. And now you've heard enough of us. It's the time we've all been waiting for, the awards ceremony, so let's invite Austin and Tahina back to share the results for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Mr. Lang and Professor Young and Taub. Before we start, one more thing, one more thing. We'd just like to thank all the finalists for all your hard work this year. You guys did a really great job. Yes. So for that, to thank you, you guys are going to get Raptor Tank t-shirts and goodie bags. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> That's great. Uh -huh. So no more lying, no more playing. Yep. We're going to tell you guys who went. We're going to let Tahina do the honors, so please. OK, so in third place, receiving $750 for their business is, drum roll, yeah. Usher. Yeah. Well, welcome to the Congratulations. I'm going to take a quick picture. Congratulations, congratulations, okay. All right, so. So for the second place award, we have, are you guys ready? Drum roll. Christina's Creations. Thank you. Congratulations. There you are, congratulations. Oh, nice. Very well. Good job. Good job. And lastly, third annual. All yes. right. Our third annual Raptor Tank Business Pitch Competition winner, recipient of $2,500, is Chris Swift. <laughs> Chris, how does it feel to win the competition? It feels great, you know, it feels tremendous knowing all the hard work paid off. What are you planning to do with $2,500? Well, I'm going to take the seed money and I'm definitely going to look to scale my business and purchase, you know, the necessary insurance policy I need to to get into these apartment complexes. Congratulations. Thank you. And there's something else, right? Right, one more. $500, right? That you guys selected, so the Audience Choice Award. Now, to you know who won that? Mm, drum roll, drum roll. Drum roll, drum roll. <laughs> Our winner for the $500 is Evo. Congratulations. Congratulations. Awesome. Okay. Great job. <laughs> so, Austin, take it away. Next, next, next. Okay, so we want to again congratulate all of our contestants for all the hard work they put, put in through this whole course of this year and the whole process of Raptor Tank. And we, just give them one more round of applause. 